Ken Lau, Executive Director of Metabout Design Shanghai, Inc. And in 1994, Ken Lau founded uh, the company in Singapore and ventured into China in 2006. And apart from delivering creative solutions for his clients in China and Singapore, Ken also co-founded Sing Cham Shanghai in 2018. Okay, so he spent 14 years in Shanghai and traveled to more than 40 cities in China for work and leisure. He will share how he challenged the norms and made a difference in the lives of both Singaporeans and the Chinese. So ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, Ken Lau. I went to China in 2006 to, not for my pot of gold, so I didn't have a pot of gold, okay? Uh, but it was in pursuit of my um, third teenage dream. That is to pursue my uh, ancestral and cultural roots. And, but because uh, I was already running a design agency, uh, so I went there with, uh, to take on design uh, in a different manner. And I hope to, at uh, that time, I wish to uh, accomplish something that I could not do in, uh, while I was back here in Singapore. Um, I am mad about design, uh, and uh, I am in a business of uh, doing mostly visual communications. Uh, design does really a lot from interior design, architecture, uh, and uh, all kinds. But I'm specifically in the business of visual communications design, which is about branding, corporate communications, and visual uh, and, and marketing communications. But what I'd like to share with you uh, is something that uh, has been very beneficial. In fact, it is all of me in my past 13 years uh, in China. Uh, and it has also benefited uh, many Singaporeans, young and old, especially students, interns, while they are there in uh, Shanghai and Beijing. This is my name card. So it says, uh, 设计狂人, uh, Company name is called Mad About Design, which I co-founded with my brother Watson, a very talented photographer and graduate from uh, Tomasa Poly. Okay, so Mad About Design, uh, in short, is a uh, MAD, Mad. Uh, it doesn't really mean I'm mad man, although sometimes I am, but it also means uh, make a difference. Now, make a difference is nothing new, but it is uh, about everything that you want to do. Okay, uh, to change the norms, to challenge the norms. Okay, uh, so that part, I also have a second name card. Okay, uh, this is the Singapore Chamber of uh, Commerce and Industry, the Shanghai chapter, which I co-founded in uh, 2018 last year. Okay, um, we have a slogan. It's called member-centric, business-focused, and uh, social glue. It's about keeping Singaporean businessmen, professionals, and individuals connected while we are out of Singapore. Okay. Um, so those are the two cards uh, that I hold when, while I'm in China. Okay. Um, I'll start with my story. Okay. Back in 2005, so I asked myself what had I always wanted. I had three childhood dreams. Um, the first one was to be a soldier. Uh, I'm an ex-military officer. My second childhood dream was to be an artist. Now, I never had any kind of like a formal training like uh, Aisha. So I learned this uh, from young, from my dad, who is a Chinese teacher and a calligrapher and also an artist. So um, while I never had any kind of professional training, I had wanted to create beyond just a uh, drawing, uh, painting, um, to create something that uh, to make people laugh, um, to make meaning out of the world, okay, uh, etc. So when I left the army in 1997, okay, uh, I decided to yeah, go full time as a commercial artist, a designer. In that 10 years while I'm in Singapore, so I worked with uh, all kinds of uh, brands, big and big and small. Uh, my office was, in fact, just right opposite Purvis Street. My third childhood dream was actually to be a Chinese teacher. Yeah. 
actually, I speak Chinese more fluently. And spending so much time in China, right? I usually share in Chinese. I blog in Chinese. So please pardon me if my English is, you know, like a bit. Okay. So, um, but of course, my Chinese would not be able to make it. You know, uh, although I did like CL1 in Anglican High, I always like enjoy Chinese uh, language, arts, culture, and literature. So um, I would not imagine myself to become a Chinese teacher, if at all. So at that point, I say that, you know, let's uh, I would want to consider why not take that bold leap, okay, the leap of faith. It was an emerging market, China, to venture into China um, to. Of course, I got to sustain a living with design, okay. Uh, but at the same time, to pursue my that roots, my that Chinese roots, okay, to be completely immersed in the Chinese environment, and at the same time, okay, work very closely with uh, young people, locals, okay, understand the Chinese youth uh, psyche, and maybe not to brainwash people. And before I get brainwashed, okay, let's see if I could like uh, uh, consider um, pr present an alternative, okay, to what is otherwise. And in Chinese, there's this thing called Ying Dao Li, you know, the hard truth, the way. Whatever makes money is the way, the truth, the light. That is not the thing. So, um, so that's uh, that was how I started. Okay, back in uh, the time about 2006, okay, to break up the Chinese and the teacher part, okay, into being very Chinese environments, and the, well, in that Chinese environments, okay, to not be a teacher, but possibly to be a mentor of sorts. And in Chinese, of course, we will not say to be a lao shi, but very, very much to be a tong xue forever. Because I believe that while there's something for the Chinese young people to learn from, like Singaporeans or foreigners like ourselves, there is also much for us to learn from the Chinese. Okay. So I started. Uh, how I started? I carry a big A1 portfolio bag. You know, if you work with uh, advertising and creative agencies, in those days, 10, 15 years ago, they carry a you know, portfolio. And then you make an A stand and you start to flip and say, blah, 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 blah. You try to like uh, howl in and say how good your staff are. Okay, so uh, I was in carrying that back. Okay, um, I got to know of uh, Shanghai Singapore Business Association. There is such an organization in Shanghai uh, through the then IE Singapore uh, website. Okay, so I wrote emails and then thereafter I connect, attended two of their networking sessions. And then um, the Secretary General was kind to me to offer me the email contacts database. So I made one very interesting attempt. Are you into email marketing? It sounds so passe, right? But then in those years, it was quite hot, right? Email marketing. You send out EDMs. You send out self-introductory uh, letters. So out of the 225, uh, I sent out 225 emails. And uh, while well, the bulk of the, the, the contents remains uh, similar, okay, but I do an attempt to consider the background of the recipient, the target whom I'm sending out to, I was sending out to, um, to try to connect myself, what I can offer okay, uh, with the recipients. And my conclusion would be the same. At that time, there was an OCBC ad. You know, there's this ad with uh, Mustafa. So long time ago, right? Mustafa, you know, uh, I like the concluding line, so I borrowed it. Okay. Sometimes all it takes is for somebody to believe in you and to give you a chance. So, uh, sending out after sending 225 emails in a week, I took time to write to every one of them. Um, a week later, I received uh, 24 responses. And if you do your math, that's not bad, correct? More than 10%. Typically, 3 5%, you'll be very happy, right? 
So for uh, 10, more than 10%, that was really quite good. Okay. And out of the 24 who responded, I met 12. It was also not bad. Half the hit. Eh? Yeah. And then I start to uh, learn about the overseas Singaporean mentality. If you have been overseas, especially in China, you will know what I'm going to talk about. Okay. Uh, fantastic works, you know, the A1, the, the, the portfolio. Kent, I like your works. Singaporean quality, but must be China price. And cheapest of three coats. Yeah. There wasn't such a thing like, you know, Singaporeans help Singaporeans. No. Oh, yes, but then with conditions attached. Hey, bro, let's do go a long way. We can be partners, but you wear my T-shirt, you use my name card. You'll be my subcon. Yes. And at that time, I also got this stupid, you know, mentality. This, you know, delusions of grandeur that I was mad about design, been in Singapore for 10 years. Why should I, you know, <laughs> wear your T-shirt, use your name card, right? Uh, so I... 12, right? So for the first 11, so I did say no to all of them. Okay. And the last one was a PR agency. Okay. Uh, a boutique size, uh, a if you use today's terminology, it would be called an, uh, a startup. Okay. Basically, you know, just a small a bunch of a Singaporean and a Hong Kong British mix. Okay. Uh, so they were ex Besson Mastella. If you're in the PR industry, you know this uh, company. Okay. Under the WPP group. So they set up, they sort of like Putong Jalan or stole some five, six uh, ex big time clients over and then they, are in, they were in business. So again, uh, I won't mention name because there are friends here who know him. Okay, bro, I like your works, come join us. Okay, but you got to use my card, my t-shirt, wear a t-shirt, all that. I say, okay, that's fine. I need to, yeah, I, I, I'm there too. I, I, after 11 of the, hey, bro, you know, I learned to humble myself, okay, to maybe it's not too bad to wear other people's t-shirt, use other people's name card. I remember very clearly, he said that, I have this uh, room for you. You know, my, my space is, uh, where I'm going to convert, but I'm more familiar with uh, square feet, right? We have uh, 1,400 square feet, this office space. Okay, I can offer you uh, uh, 150 square feet. How big is 150 square feet? Hey, like that, no? It's just like that, right? With a window. Okay, and a half-working icon. Okay, you can squeeze five people inside. Okay, I give you, you know, bro rates. You know, we are fellow Singaporeans. Okay, I offer you, you know, 3,000 RMB, which is 600, 13 years ago. Yeah, and then, uh, okay, internet and water, utilities, all that, right? Just another 500 utilities. I was super gantong. You know, I was very touched by a fellow Singaporean helping me. Okay, but if you're in Shanghai, a well, while, you know that, mm, okay, not so great, right? Not so broly. Okay, uh, so that, at that point, I started learning a lesson. You know, this lesson of what? Okay, uh, if you are in design or you are in anything else that you work for other people, right? Uh, you are a subcontractor, you know. It's always about, you know, how much cut you're going to give to people. Whether people are mark, you're going to mark up from what you offer or you, they take a cut from you. So... I learned from the 11, so I accepted it. So uh, quite soon, and that was already 2007, uh, I was in business with them as the executive creative director of their creative hot shop of the PR agency. Okay, I, I had four staff. One of them was the NUS uh, Aki dropout because he didn't like Aki after a while. Okay, was my, she was my intern. And now an award-winning uh, furniture designer. Yeah. Okay, so uh, for eight months, uh, our, we represented the agency as, a, as their, their creative hot shop. I was preparing, doing PPTs like this, and uh, helping them to write stories, both in English and in Chinese. Uh, and then I, basically for every project that we did together with them. There's a PR part, you know, the professional services part. There's also the creative, the design executions part. And that when I did that, uh, I would have to be the cheapest of uh, three quotes. 
and 30% cut is the, the, the lessons, the fee I will pay, xue fei. Yeah, it was quite painful, but then, hey, you are a beggar, right? No, you're not quite a beggar, but you don't have much choice. If you want to pursue something, you're hungry enough, right? You just take it on, right? And then maybe after that, you eat them up. <laughs> but I did not. Okay. So, um, after eight months, I have uh, learned my basic lessons. Okay, I eat humble pie. And within that eight months, I recall one of the key lessons that I learned is about, you know what's the key about communications? It's about knowing the culture. And to understand the culture, you need to speak the language. To speak the language, you need to write the language. Agree? Yeah. I recall in the summer of 2007, when I made a presentation to some 14 uh, senior executives of this uh, Fortune 500 company that supplies special steel and ball bearings to Boeing for a customer gala uh, an event, five day. So when I, that was I, uh, really quite gabra, much worse than now, because I need to present it in Chinese, in Mandarin. Then about five minutes into my presentation, the lady said, the, the senior uh, communications manager said, in Chinese, after that I'll translate for you, Ken, you Chinese, Okay, in English, Ken, your Chinese uh, cannot make it. Yeah, I don't translate literally, right? Cannot make it. Okay, don't waste our time. Speak English. Even though you're Singaporean, right? Singaporeans, your English also not yeah, quite there. But at least don't waste our time. Okay, I mean, Singaporeans, the general Singaporean English quality standard, not quite. Yeah, you hear from me, you know. Okay, otherwise, you wouldn't have speak good English campaign, right? So, uh, you know, I was also like that, trippy suit, summer. And then my ears turned red, my face turned red. And then I presented in English. And then after that, done. But that was not it. That started my whole journey of, you know, really appreciating the language, the culture. Uh, and this gave me a lot of this. I benefited a lot from it. Okay. So within one and a half years, and there was some time by the end of 2008, okay, I was able to draft my uh, contract in Chinese, <laughs> observing the Chinese uh, contract laws and all that. Uh, it was not easy. While many people could speak Mandarin, okay, from conversational to a business uh, Mandarin, but few Singaporeans could, you know, tackle business uh, Chinese and contract in Chinese. Agree? Or who could do that? But don't be shy. I'm sure some of you who have that experience in China, you would probably could do that. Yeah, it's with a lot of effort. Remember, I didn't have good experience with Singaporeans. So in my first nine years of uh, being in China, I completely detached myself from Singaporeans. There were times that, you know, inevitably, I have to bump into fellow Singaporeans. You know, Singaporeans is a sizable community in Shanghai. I was sharing with Tun Li uh, and Cindy. Okay, um, in Shanghai, registered with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, and Kichon knows, the numbers, I think, dropped a bit. Okay, so it's about 6,000 or a bit more Registered, okay, <laughs> according to Shikai. <laughs> yeah, and then there are some of these, you know, mobile Singaporeans, you know, business visa, the rotating door type. You know rotating door type? They come in, out, in, out type. Uh, 14 days or APEC card. So uh, also there are about some 10,000 uh, Singaporeans, okay, in, Singap in Shanghai at any one time. Okay, out of a total population of 27 million. Compared with more than 20,000 Chinese in, 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 in Singapore, with a population of about 5 million. So you see that, yeah, but nonetheless, the Singapore community in Shanghai is still the biggest uh, overseas Singaporean community, among the biggest. 
In China, it is. Yeah, in China, that's the biggest uh, Singaporean community. Yeah. So, and there are, I mean, where do we Singaporeans meet? At restaurants, uh, Singapore food, right? You know, curry chicken, hor fun, kway teow, laksa. Who haven't had dinner? <laughs> yeah. <coughs> so, those are the places that we have to bump into Singaporeans, like you or not. Yeah. Mm. That thing of uh, the. I'm not here to say all the things, bad things about Singaporeans, but then sometimes, you know, as, by, as I interact with uh, Chinese, my Chinese associates, uh, usually the conversation will start quite uh, cordially, uh, that they will, you know, say, wow, how good is Singapore? Oh, number one in this, number one in uh, everything, Changi Airport, and uh, what else? Transparency Index? No. Okay, and then uh, what, oh, corruption? Uh, the bribery index right, uh, ran quite good. Uh, the ease of business, uh, open economy, uh, digital nation, etc. We've got lots of uh, this, uh, lots of uh, honors, correct? Um, but then, after a few drinks, right, when people relax, then they start to share with you, tell you what they really think about Singaporeans. It's a Chinese saying called xiao jia qi. That means very small or narrow-minded is one thing. It is interesting. We are assumed we thought ourselves as very international, okay. But many times, but we are rather okay. We can't really think compared with other people. We are those the type that can't really think big, the like you know change the world type. You know, <laughs> you can't. <laughs> I'm guilty of it, even until today, okay. And. Uh, <laughs> In Simon Wu wrote this book. What's that famous book? Simon Wu, the creative technology founder. Nuts. No U turn syndrome. You, you know about no, what's no U turn syndrome, Tun Li? Yeah, what's no U turn syndrome? <laughs> yeah. Have you, heard, have you heard of no U turn syndrome? Okay, Singaporeans, right? You drive on a car and then you see, well, I want to make U turn. Um, this place looks like can U turn, but no signboard. So I better not. See? Most Chinese, and in fact, uh, most non-Singaporeans, right? Hey, this house, uh, the gate wide open. Nobody say cannot go in there. Eh? Maybe cannot, but why not go in and, and take a look first? Then you cannot chase by dogs or what, right? Or <laughs> security guards. Then you react to it, uh, isn't it? Okay. If there are no rules, then you start to, what? Try to do what you could first. And there's something very unique about being in China. Okay, the, although it's a capital economy, but very much it's a very market economy. And the government let things uh, run for a while. Then after the thing, they say it becomes too big, and then let's uh, control it, and then let's make it big. Such as uh, quite recently, just last week, right? The Chinese government, they, 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 they gone beyond Facebook okay, to going to launch DCEP, Digital Currency Electronic Payments. Yes? Although we were laughing at them, two years ago, they blocked blockchain, right? They say no blockchain in China, but then they went ahead. So, um, that no U-turn syndrome didn't do Singaporeans, the Singapore brand really great. Uh, I asked once, uh, I recall 2010, I started to get quite friendly with uh, Hong Kongers. You know, Hong Kongers are very pragmatic people, right? And in Chinese, we say jian suan ke bo, they can be very acute very critical, and they laugh at it, at you. Okay, I asked this uh, Raymond, who is a vice chair of the Hong Kong uh, Chamber at that point, say, hey, what do you think of Singapore, Singaporeans? Actually, if I use Cantonese to say, it would be more fun. Uh. I say it's Cantonese first. Okay, then I translate for you. Raymond, you think we are Singaporeans? We are Singaporeans. We are Singaporeans. <laughs> what does that mean? Okay. Singaporeans, hey, you guys are very straight, very honest. And what are you good for? Eventually, you are only good to be beggars. And that's quite really ouch, isn't it? So that was an ouch movement, uh, moment for me. Okay. Uh, but what he really meant was that Singaporeans are better off as law abiding uh, employees, isn't it? 
Wait, wait. How many of us here are businessmen? Are business owners? One. Okay, I want to walk out this place uh, alive, so I shall not. Okay. <laughs> okay. You know, in the, among, the, <laughs> among the Singaporean community in Shanghai, okay, uh, there are not many entrepreneurs. But most of our Singaporeans are there as uh, senior executives. Does it sound better? Yeah, PMETs. Okay, Singaporeans excel as PMETs. Professionals, managers, executives, and uh, technical people. Isn't it? Okay. Now, back to just now I mentioned about Simon Wu's uh, no, no Newton syndrome, nuts. Okay, we are very good at, you know, you've got no rules. Uh, Singaporeans are good at writing rules. Yes? Uh, SOPs, you know, uh, governance, uh, guidelines, uh, policies, very good. So, you see, Singapore, China was an emerging uh, this economy. And even at that point when I came into China, I went into China in Shanghai, already a very international uh, metropolitan uh, city and market. So, there are a lot of, of course, local businesses who want to venture overseas. Plus, of course, there are a lot of multinationals in China, in Shanghai, okay? including the bulk of Singaporean businesses, especially the GLCs, uh, government-linked companies, okay, Capital Land, uh, DBS, uh, OCBs, you name them. Almost all of the Singaporean big brands are headquartered in Shanghai. Okay? So who they hire? Singaporeans. Especially the Chinese uh, companies, who they hire if they are really thinking about venturing overseas or to a Southeast Asian market, which was then also an emerging market, Okay, for which Singapore would be the most ideal springboard. Of course, they hire Singapore. La. Okay, Singaporeans. So when they hire Singaporeans, the whole idea is that Singaporeans are good that when boss not around, they still work. They still OT. Correct? Yeah, but that's what Singaporeans are good for. Okay. Uh, we have, most Singaporeans have the integrity, we are honest, we are hardworking, we are diligent. And we always uh, practice due diligence, isn't it? Okay, when we believe it is not right, we report. Yes, so that makes uh, Singaporeans somewhat unique when compared with uh, the rest. Okay, uh, I mentioned also that part about the xiao qi part, right? Okay. Xiao qi is also translated to do with the way we spend, the way we treat people, uh, the way we uh, do budgeting. Okay. Um, again, a Taiwanese said that uh, we are not bad because we are second to them, Taiwanese. In Chinese, there's uh, this word called komen. You know what's komen? Stingy. Singaporeans, uh, in, in, at least in Shanghai, right? Among the locals, right? The Chinese locals, they say Singaporeans are the second in the stinginess ranking. Taiwanese are very good at the, the BS, it's all very big, right? But they, when it comes to really spending, right? Very stingy. Nothing to do with the way they behave socially. When they socially, right? Especially, you know, they are like Fujian people, Hokkien people, are very hao shuang wen. That means when food, uh, drinks, and all that are very, they are very, you know, generous. But when it comes to business dealings, not quite. Okay, but Singaporeans are, it's a, uh, no, you know, the, you read that book, The Hard Truths, right? By LKY? About LKY? Okay, that this whole thing about being frugal, isn't it? About being diligent. And that has brought us a long way, such that, you know, when we are in, from our social to, um, to uh, business dealings with the Chinese, right? This is something that they could not quite get it. Yeah, that we are not quite generous to, wow, you know, like, like that. Firstly, we don't have so much like that. <laughs> Is that <laughs> we don't have a, okay? And secondly, even if we have, we are not trained to be like that, okay? These are not bad things. But then it really does put Singaporeans in a somewhat not terribly, not in a terribly favorable light among Singaporeans. Now, I've spoken at length about the Jialat part. But like it or not, as a Singaporean who will venture overseas, China, and I guess anywhere else in the world, you can't run away from it. You are a Singaporean. Someone ever said, there are three things we cannot change since birth, from birth. Okay, one is the color of our skin. 
like Michael Jackson, right? How he changed? Cannot. Yeah. And what's wrong with that? Okay, so your skin color, meaning your ethnicity, you can never change that. Agree? Second is that, okay, uh, of course, your family, your, the family that you are born into. Can you change that? No. Your bloodline, you can't change that. Thirdly is your country of origin, <laughs> your place of birth. Okay, where you are born and you grow up and train in all those kind of things, right? Okay, so being Singaporean is something that you like it or not, right? No matter how much, how fluent I speak in Chinese, okay, um, I will always be a Singaporean. So there are some of these things that are useful as a Singaporean, and I'll attempt to share. I cannot represent every Singaporean overseas, but I think that I could represent myself because I've uh, achieved certain extent of uh, success, and that's in the area of building relationships, relations. And what is the key thing you want to build in relations? Capital T, trust. Okay. From 2007 to 2008, I was working, you know, that PR agency, that those guys. So I left because I'm I told myself I didn't really want to be in China to serve clients. Okay. I wanted that to be there to create. Okay. So I started to do cartoons, illustrations. I went into develop this series of products. The name this cartoon character is called Mwa. It's a cartoon character, it's an onion head black, okay, got nice bright eyes, like what I used to have. And no mouth, no mouth, no mouth, yeah. Okay, uh, this character, right, he can, he can observe his talent, he was talented, he could draw, he could, uh, he was inspired by the world and the kindness and compassion around, but he just could not speak. If you could not speak, what could you do? You could touch people, right? You could draw interesting stories. Yes, there are other forms of communications. And it's especially interesting in China because it is a communist and a capitalist uh, 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 country. Okay? So, with that, I went on to copyright, trademark, uh, and had three patents out of it. Okay? Uh, that was an interesting process from 2008 right up to 2010. Before and uh, after the financial crisis, okay, I started to travel all over China, especially in Guangdong. Guangdong, in, but actually there are only three famous places in Guangdong. Uh. One is Guangzhou, famous for food, right? Okay, two is Shenzhen, okay, famous for fake stuff. Also famous for fake goods, yes? Okay, um, I went to a lot of factories with my original concept sketches, uh, CAD drawings and whatnot, right? I visited factory after factory. I could, oh, one story, that's quite funny. You know, at that time, there was Alibaba just started. Okay, so Alibaba, so when I see <laughs> this thing about being f fake, right? Okay, uh, no, a broker, yeah, a broker. So many of these things will claim that they own those, uh, the companies, the, the factories. So they are really all, a lot of them are brokers. Okay, so once I was developing this, I was into corporate gifts. Okay, so uh, corporate gifts means I would deal a lot with like from toy to stationary factories, mainly dealing with plastics, uh, metal alloys, uh, and of course, uh, wood-based or paper pulp-based uh, materials and fabrics. So mainly these four kinds of materials, okay. Uh, and so I visited, so that morning I went to a Shenzhen, not Dongguan, okay. And this toy factory, so the, it was a broker agent who brought me there. I, okay, thank you. So I called the next person, uh, drove like 30 minutes away to meet that next person who would bring me to his factory. Then, <laughs> it was the same factory. Yeah, but they changed signboard. Yeah, they changed signboard. Yeah, so it was quite interesting. Yeah, 
no, they changed the signboard of the GM, the, the Changchang office. Yeah, outside the factory, no signboard. You've never been to those factories? No, here from Ubi to Zhong, anywhere in Singapore, you cannot have that. But over back then, right, there's such a thing that you, they keep their license somewhere, okay, deep in the office. But then the Changchang, right, meaning the, 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 well, the factory, the manager, right? Yeah, the, the, the company sign can change any time. And then for the real factory owner, right, I mean pride is not important, so long as can make business can already. Anyway, so during that time, I went to no less than 30 factories in the mere like two, three years. And then um, I, very often, after calling from Shanghai and visiting them, I spent two days, sometimes three days, quite literally squat at their factories and talk to people. I did not go into signing NDAs with them because I always uh, create all things original, not just creative and innovative. So there's this thing that uh, once, uh, more than once, okay, the person finally, he, he had this burning question, but eventually he cannot take it anymore, he got to ask me, Kent, why do you trust me? Why do you trust us? This is the first time we collaborate. Why would you trust us? I shared with them, uh, I was brought up in the Singapore army, something I was quite proud of. Okay, um, and there was this guy, at that time I was a young captain, and my boss was uh, Desmond Quack. You heard of him? Yeah. I scrubbed one time. Uh, prepared, was preparing his white paper for MINDEF. And then in the morning I said, Sir, my hard drive crashed. Uh, in two hours' time, he wrote it again. I thought I'd be screwed in my career. But then a month later, he got me to write the white paper again. So I said, uh, why do you trust that I could do it again? I would not commit the same uh, mistake. Say, well, it's very simple. I believe you are good unless you prove yourself otherwise. But of course, I will share with him in Chinese. I believe you are good unless you prove yourself otherwise. Yes? In, in Chinese, in China, right? This trusting, it doesn't happen so methodically like in Singapore by contracts and all those things. Yes? Okay, and it is not just about, you know, girl, happy to, you know, drinks and food. It's not that. The real thing about building trust is not just having somebody to introduce you to somebody. It's about you taking the step forward okay, to, to, to build that trust. It's like, you know, there's this river, you know, uh, it's, uh, it's really running quite rapidly and then there's uh, this, you know, Tumu Chiao or really this uh, bridge, right, a wooden bridge. You cannot stand here and shout across, hey, brother, you just crossed this bridge, can one, no problem. Have you tried? No, I think it looks okay. You come, come. Trust me. No, you have to cross it yourself and then you confirm, can. And then you bring him over. And this is about building trust. And that was a lesson that I learned since my army days uh, and in China. Okay. Uh, interestingly, backtrack three years ago, okay, I, 2006, I asked my Singaporeans who are in Singapore and those who are in China. Okay. Those who, are in, who have been already in Shanghai, right? they said that, bro, no problem one. You just three years here, if you can survive, you will enjoy this, you will make it but you must speak Chinese, okay? And then in Singapore, I also met with uh, Singaporeans who have left China. They say, Ken, forget it. Lah. You sure die one. And you are so simple, you are quite honest, you sure cannot cheat out one. You see, there's a difference. Which side of the fence you are, correct? So I avoid that fuse and I just jump fence. And then you can decide for yourself. Okay, uh, and uh, since then, I spent 13 years, I kind of overstayed in China. Okay, uh, the key thing is really about trust. Okay, uh, after that trust, right, it's all about, you know, saying what you mean and meaning what you say. Okay, it really means that integrity, correct? Integrity is saying what you mean, say what you mean, and mean what you say. That means whatever you say, you promise, you deliver. And if you can't, Admit it. Okay. And this is also one quality that most Chinese appreciate 
and respect Singaporeans. During that period, uh, from you know, Guangdong, I also ventured into the mountainous areas of Guizhou. Have you all been to Guizhou or heard of this place at all? The Guizhou province. It is the poorest uh, province in China. Okay, it's got a lot of uh, minorities. Um, and Guizhou is huge. Uh, the part that I went to is called Qian Dongnan, the, the south, uh, southeastern part of uh, Guizhou, uh, which are mostly the Miao people. Or in Thailand, they call the Hmong, H M O N G. Okay, they are famous for their uh, silver, just like Thai. Thai has a lot of the Hmong people, right? They're good at silver and uh, fabrics. Uh, batik. Uh, in Chinese, it's called La Ran Batik. Okay. Uh, yeah, and this thing I wore. Okay, I've been wearing this for 10, 10 years by a silver artisan. During that one year in 2010, I went to a lot. Of, I walked through the hills, the mountains, and meeting people. Okay. Um, at that point, of course, uh, internet is already a big thing, but there wasn't WeChat and all that yet. So I wanted to learn. You recall I talked about Mwa, my the cartoon character. Okay. Mwa is all about this very curious and creative uh, kid who would go around and then learn, interact with the locals, and create something original. And I spent a lot of time with the locals who could hardly speak, you know, proper Mandarin. But they're immensely artistic. I wouldn't say creative, because there's a difference between art being artistic and being creative. So, uh, and I was really amazed by the, the artistry part, the artistic part, not artistry. Okay, and I started to ask, you know, so where is, the, is your inspiration come from? Where did your inspiration come from? Or In a modern day context where most Singaporean designers or anywhere in the world, you know, urban, you know, city dwellers, right? Our inspiration come from where? Internet, Pinterest. If you're in video, you use Vimeo, not YouTube to get, you know, interesting video ideas, right? Okay, you want to look for a marketing campaign concept, you just search Google and all that. Right? Okay, and of course, we've got good libraries like this. You can find lots of uh, good design resources in here, right, Ash? Lots of uh, resources here. So these are great too. But the thing is, some, you know, well, well I'm talking about the design and the art aspect, right? Okay, I'm always uh, interested in finding, you know, some designs, some creations are just got soul. You're, you know, you have that soul in it. Sometimes even in commercial works, you can differentiate, differentiate it. Okay. Uh, one that is purely commercial and one that is got soul. Or things that could touch, touch you and inspire you. So I did ask, and they say the design, their inspiration comes from labor. Uh, in, in, in English, okay, inspiration comes from labor, inspiration comes from life or living. Okay, and that's also important. So that one, right, that 2010 was actually, uh, to me, it was important, okay, because it helped me to move out and that, you know, of course, I'm going to spend a lot of time on internet. Okay, my iPhone screen time is an average of three and a half hours per day. Okay, by my Power Mac, right? That's been serving me for eight years. I am on the, my MacBook Pro for like 14 hours a day. Okay, but still, at the same time when I'm out there, right, I will certainly want to observe, meet people, and talk to people, and move around. That's also important when it comes to drawing inspirations. Those are a few of these are kind of like, a, it's rather anecdotal. Anecdote. It's purely hearsay, right? You could draw stories from, you know, fellow our friends here who have got your Chinese experience, China experience maybe same or somewhat very different from mine, even if you're a designer, okay? Um, some of those things that I observe, you know, on a bigger level, okay? Um, in China, do we use China MIC products? You know MIC, right? Made in China. 
<laughs> sounds like very like a derogatory, but then we can't avoid it. Many of our products today are made in China. Okay. Any one of us who don't use made in China products at all? Wait, okay. Anyone use Huawei phone? Well, okay, a few. And trust me, it's going to grow. Okay, my next phone is going to be I Huawei. Not iPhone anymore. China is known for one thing that starts with a capital C. Copy? Huh? Cat. Copycat everything. So if you're not going to challenge that, and then I was asking why, why China does that? Uh, I was quite into painting and calligraphy. And you know, Chinese, uh, when they learn of this painting and calligraphy, uh, there's this method that's called Lin Mo. You know what is Lin Mo? What is Lin Mo? It's basically your, the original, the painting, and then you're tracing paper, right? And then you trace to perfection, right? To the dot. Okay, so this thing has been rooted in Chinese for thousands of years. That the way they learn, the way they do, Lin Mo, copycat, trace. So which is why they produce these things, right? This, they're good at copycat. You cannot change it, just like you cannot, in a generation, change our Newton syndrome. This is in our DNA as Singaporeans, right? Okay, so you don't laugh at China Chinese being copycats. Two years ago, okay. Um, What's his name? Jack Ma. Okay, Jack Ma. Okay, Ma Yun, that was after they got listed already on NASDAQ. So then uh, one famous uh, one of those luxury brands uh, challenged uh, Ma Yun. It said, on your team all, okay, there are so many of these uh, counterfeits, copycats, right? Do something about it. Then Ma Yun said this in the nonchalantly, said, I, I, please, I spent tens of millions of uh, renminbi trying to eradicate. I have a team of uh, a thousand people, no, uh, more than a hundred people sitting in the office every day going after people on the, on the team mall as well as uh, Taobao, going after all these uh, you know, counterfeit uh, producers. But I can't help it. You know why I can't help it? The reason that he gave? No, he cannot totally eradicate copycats and counterfeits in China, in the Chinese market, especially on the internet. Because counterfeits, Chinese counterfeits on my Taobao and the Tmall, right? They are cheaper than originals. Sometimes they are better to use than originals. So when, when Jack Ma, Ma Yun said that, you know, that it, is, uh, it looks exactly like the original, it's cheaper than original, it also works like the original, but it, he did not say one thing. It is, is it as durable as the original? No. China copycats uh, were hardly as durable as the originals. Can we agree to this? Yes. Okay, so in all things are produced by Chinese, okay, we already could accept it that most of them are not going to be durable, especially if they are copycats, because they only just want cheap. And talking about cheap, on the any kind of like platforms like Taobao, Tmall, and any e-commerce, uh, they don't go for quality. You sell this at this price, I want to do better than you. That means I want to do cheaper than you. It's never a case where I will do my product or service better than yours. Never. Almost. Okay. So, <clears throat> durability is one thing. Originality is another. But, of late, in the past five years, there has been a change. Yes. And those of us who are using Huawei and Xiaomi, yes, you see a change. Okay, that things are getting more durable, things are getting more uh, innovative. Okay, uh, and actually, it's quite nice also the latest, you know, Mate 30 Pro and stuff, right? Uh, and the latest, you go to a Xiaomi. Uh, uh, you know, flagship store, what, Suntech. They're cool stuff. Not expensive and all, quite durable. I have uh, eight Xiaomi products back in my home, uh, intelligent home uh, appliances. Okay, um, that they are coming out from the mold of a uh, copycat, okay, to start to create. They're starting very, very small, but it is growing, okay. Some would compare, uh, you know, back in the 1970s, you know, you got the Hong, wait, Hong Kong 
toys, 1970s, right? Kate, cheap, yeah. And then when it started to have like uh, Apple computers, okay, the, the best copycats are from are made in Japan. The second best is like Taiwan. Then the third best is made in Hong Kong. Yeah. But, and then fast forward into the 80s and the 90s. You know sports shoes? Okay, who does copycats? Which country? Uh, Korea. Yes? Okay, uh, but you see, all these people, they have also moved out to create something of their own. So you could see that China is evolving in such a way that uh, it's taking somewhat similar to uh, such uh, proven models, uh, the countries, but at the same time, right, because they have a lot more resources, meaning money, meaning capital, okay, they could uh, actually fast forward and do things in a much faster space that if you're not careful enough, then will just disappear into nothingness, for Singaporeans especially. Okay. Um, there's a one very interesting book that I'd like to recommend, and that is The End of Copycat China. Heard of that book? Okay, The End of Copycat China. It's written some five years ago, and that makes a very good, interesting read. If you are really looking at, uh, you know, from going beyond um, building, construction, the very traditional industry, to, you know, pro producing things, not sourcing, uh, okay, but producing things, you believe that you want to create a product or a solution or a service, Okay, then uh, you could consider you know, reading this book and we could talk a lot more about this. 2006 in Shanghai. And then it was sometime about until 2015. Okay. In between, I was uh, doing uh, original products. I had three patents. I had a startup but failed. Uh, <laughs> many financial crises. And then um, I went on to continue serving clients. I have a team of uh, 12 people, all young people, locals, no Singaporeans. And uh, remember I was uh, talking about this thing about, you know, taking a track, a path uh, less, uh, uh, less uh, traveled. So when they asked me, you know, why, I, w I was asking them why you must do this to do that. And I was starting also to ask them, hey, why not we try this method? Why not we try something that you know shows that we are interested in pursuing something that is more long-lasting, durable? Uh, why not we go beyond the... You know, Chinese has this thing called gao ding. Done. Da, lao ta, gao ding. Hey, boss, done. But this gao ding uh, is not really the... Yeah. You hide something, the dirt under the carpet also gao ding. Right? You don't see it anymore. Yeah. Who say this famous line? It ain't done till it's done. John Wayne, is it? Yeah, it ain't done till it's done. So uh, rather closing the loop, right? So I challenge uh, my team of these young people, yeah, don't tell me about the gao ding, but go beyond that to say that completed, okay? Um, the second thing I challenge them is that uh, this thing about the 差不多就可以. Huh? Aga aga is liao. Huh? What's that? Yeah, 差不多,差很多. Huh? 一样的,一样的. Same, same, la, can. La. Yeah, this 差不多, right? It's a killer, right? May one tea, right? No, cannot. Especially, you know, at that time I was into, you know, building, you know, Android and the iOS apps and the web solutions, right? You know, the interface may look the same, may look like okay, you use it also can, but maybe not so smooth, but actually can work. Okay, but the back end part, and those who are in coding, right, there's this whole thing about you know durable, you know, co the coding, the robustness, the, the the interoperability, and I forgot some principles. Yeah, those are really important. Okay, that the codes, fortunate for me because I graduated in computer science, right? So I didn't just appreciate the, the, the external beauty. I'm also a student who appreciate inner beauty. Yes. Okay, so uh, cannot the chapotua to kai, right? Cha to Yeah. So with that, right, I at least in my team, man about design, I eradicated that. Okay. And I have got this thing called Tu Shu Hui every Friday morning. You know, our business our work day starts at 9.30. On every Friday, 8.30. You know what we do? In Chinese it's called Tu Shu Hui. How do you say in English? Huh? Reading club, right? Yeah, reading club. Yeah, you will select a, a, a passage, right? Say 1,000 words, ah. don't be too long. 
Okay, if it's English, then you interpret, you share in Chinese. If your, your passage is about Chinese, it's Chinese and then English. Of course, we don't share like, you know, poem, poetry, uh, you know, romance stories. Uh, no, but it's usually something about professional, about living. Okay, uh, so I had that. Uh, and then until finally, my account manager one day told me, hey, Ken, I came here to work for you, to make money for you. One hour, <laughs> don't waste our time. Uh, we should be spending most of our time uh, doing business, doing work. So I was quite saddened. So after doing three years of the reading club ride, I stopped it. But it was interesting, it was useful, and it inspired uh, many of our other staff. Okay, this thing about reading, okay. Uh, and sharing what we think, that's also important. Then in 2015, something happened. Not in China, but in Singapore. I'm going to the part two. What happened in 2015? 2015 was the year that we celebrated SG 50. So it is significant. Okay. 2015 was also when we mourned okay, the passing of uh, LKY. Right. So I was two years away from my, you know, the 30 year, 10 year block. 97, 2007, 27, 2017. So just about uh, two years before, I was starting to think, uh, what do I want to do next? Okay. Um, I decided that all this time, I've been asking all the why. Why you so like that? Why Singaporeans so like that? Why Chinese so like that? Yeah. Then I realized I don't find an answer that I want. Yeah. So... At yeah, that point, after I attended the uh, memorial, that was in Shangri-La, right? In the Shanghai. I attended that memorial. I decided to sign up with, at that time, it was called uh, Shanghai Singapore Business Association. I joined, and there was a whole bunch of Singaporeans. And then uh, started to connect with the Singaporean community again. Okay, all the chao ka, you know, the smelly legs, meaning all the, you ask for, hey, bro, bro got lobang or not? It was so rampant, but I decided to just join and then start to you know, navigate uh, uh, my ways and to understand better the Singaporean psyche. Okay. <clears throat> and uh, I just couldn't find an answer why Singaporeans behave like that. I said, okay. Uh, of course, I did find some answers, but finding answers wouldn't bring me to anywhere. So in 2015, uh, from time 20 to 15 to 2016, I decided I will disband my team. And when I go to one year of uh, not exactly a sabbatical to, be, to operate on my own, but to be an active volunteer with this SSBA, Shanghai Singapore Business Association, I decided to disband my team. By end 2016, I decided that after my first three, 10 years, okay, that my next 10 years, 2017 to 2027, I will dedicate myself to serving the community, starting from the Singaporean community in Shanghai, China. Yeah. So uh, after being an active volunteer, I became an exco member, the vice president of uh, SSBA. Okay. Uh, started a whole lot of uh, social experiments. I wouldn't go into the details, um, but essentially, okay, um, to challenging typically why Singaporeans must always ask for lobang, okay? Why Singaporeans don't even have basic trust in each other when it comes to commercial dealings? Why this guy, why I say that, hey, Tsuren is cannot be trusted when I can't be trusted also? Yes? Okay. Um, then I started to build this, it's not exactly like protocol of trust, like uh, the trust protocol like blockchain, right? Uh, but it's essentially, we try to build this protocol of trust. You start by trusting other people first. And you trust by you know, helping other people. Okay. Other people means like, <clears throat> trying to say, you have money, you have money, you have money. That time, there's so many people who say, hey, Kent, you are doing all these things, great deals, all the way, best of luck. Then what? Then um, <clears throat> say, okay, good. But would you join me to do this together? No, nah, bro, I got no time, no money. You wait for me three years. Hey, some really after three years, that means now they really came on board. Serious. 
but most of the time not. Uh, okay? uh, and while there are many cynics and skeptics and people who postpone their commitments, right? I was so touched by those people, including Aisha who has volunteered but many times to do things together. Yeah, and then we just basically, you see this thing about being in a community, right, and helping, right? It's really not how much time, money, uh, on, uh, and the time you have. Okay, it's uh, how much you can give, uh, sacrifice. Yeah, and along the way, I was really touched by many Singaporeans. It only took a spark, and then the fire started spreading. Okay, it hasn't ceased yet. Uh, <laughs> So, um, asking why, we may not, I found that I could hardly get the answer I want. But when I started to ask why not, I realized I started to create possibilities and even game changers. Okay, asking why not, by asking why not, you start to create possibilities and even game changers. So today, if you ever go to Shanghai or Beijing, okay, you must call me, and then you come visit our Singaporeans. There are still some Cao Kuan Singaporeans around. You can't totally change that. But then you see the community is evolving. Okay, Singaporeans are quite happy to cozy, get cozy with each other, starting to build trust by extending trust to offer to look at you know, creating collaboration opportunities. And very importantly, that uh, Singaporeans are not looking at just Singaporeans to be an exclusive, uh, a closed community, a closed ecosystem, but an open one to be like China, <laughs> to uh, embrace you know, the rest. Okay? Uh, meaning, Singaporeans today are eager to connect with Singaporeans as much as they are also eager to connect with um, Chinese or other, uh, other uh, expats, foreigners in China to collaborate. Yeah. I do have a vision, uh, a three-year vision and plan. Uh, that's a community for good. I uh, have, a, again, like I as promised, my problem is in stopping. I shall stop at this point, and then I'll be so happy to uh, take on any uh, questions that you have or any stories or anecdotes that you could would like to share with uh, the rest of us uh, yeah if anything beyond that of course uh, we could connect on whatsapp and wechat and you can see my whole life story past 12 years on my wechat thank you very much